Professional photogrammetry software is expensive and I'm way too cheap for that. But I still want some of those sweet, sweet, high quality 3D scans. And something like Meshroom just can't deliver high quality like that. So I set out to find a free and open source photogrammetry workflow that would give me that same or better quality. Then after all that work, I figured out a workflow that gave me excellent results. Still, there was another problem. There are so many steps for this workflow and it just isn't fun to 3D scan like that. I want to click one button, step away and then get a 3D scan back. So I did what any other logic person would do. I took all those applications and spent 9 days straight tearing my hair out to combine them into one application that is exactly that one button and you have a 3D scan. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to make some stunning 3D scans using my new free and open source photogrammetry application. For your camera settings you'll want to balance three settings. The f-stop should be as high as possible but I wouldn't go larger than 10 or 12. The ISO should be as low as possible and the shutter speed should be as high as possible. When shooting handheld I would at the very least use a shutter speed of 150 or so even if it means raising the ISO because motion blur is a bigger problem than ISO noise. If you're using a phone to take the pictures look in the saving options if there is an option for raw images. If there is enable it then so that the settings don't change between images look if your phone has something to lock the exposure, white balance and ISO or some camera apps have a pro mode where you can manually set all of these settings. Then when you're taking the pictures you'll want to take pictures from lots of different heights. Maybe like one from very top down then a little bit down, a little bit more down and so on. Everything you don't take an image from is not going to be included in the 3D scan. And also when you're taking pictures make sure there's a decent amount of overlap between the images because if you don't have a decent amount of overlap the photogrammetry software software will struggle to find where the picture is in relation to the other. I always try to get at least 50% overlap between two images. The pictures are taken but we still have to do a little bit of processing on them. So I will do that in Darktable. Now that all the images imported into Darktable, I'll search an image that has both dark and bright spots so that we can better match the brightness of the dark and light parts of the wheelbarrow. So I, I think I'm gonna use this image here and I'll double click it to open it in the dark room here. And then I'll start by adjusting the exposure until this big hill here is about in the middle. You can also flip back and forth between the manual and automatic modes to see if you need to adjust the manual a little bit. As you can see the automatic mode is not going as bright as we did so I think I'm gonna go a little bit down with the exposure as well in the manual mode. The reason why I won't just use manual is because we need to copy this exposure to each image because it can change between the images. But I think this exposure is looking great so I'll move on and disable film RGB because for 3D scanning we want an image that's as flat as possible and disabling filmic RGB makes the image flatter. Then I'll switch to this tab here and toggle open the tone equalizer. Then I'll hover over the areas of the wheelbarrow that I want to change the brightness of. In my case I want to increase the brightness of the dark parts and decrease the brightness of the bright parts. So I'll hover over the dark part here and scroll upwards with my mouse wheel like this and then I'll decrease the bright parts a little bit and that looks much flatter. Here you can see the difference. This is with tone equalizer disabled and with it enabled. So it's much flatter and we want it to be as flat as possible. That's pretty much it for this image here. Now we need to copy these settings to all of the other images. So to do that I'll go into the history stack here hit selective copy, make sure that all of these are checked and then hit OK. Then hit Ctrl A to select all the images and click selective paste. Then again make sure that all the settings you want to copy are checked, in my case they are, and hit OK again. Now that's going to take a little bit, you can see it slowly updates and everything gets much flatter. That's pretty much it for the processing of the images, so we can export them now. To export them, select all the images again, go to the export tab and pick a folder where you want to place the images. Select as output destination. Then for the file format, I'll use PNG 8-bit and I will limit the resolution to 3000 pixels to make it a little bit faster. Then, once I'm happy with all these settings, I'll hit export. Now that all of the images finished exporting, the last step is the actual 3D scanning process itself. So to download the photogrammetry, application I made go to this URL right here and download the latest version. Once that's downloaded extract the zip file and open the simple photogrammetry GUI.exe file. Now it's saying we need to install some dependencies and we need administrator rights for that. So close the application again and relaunch the exe with administrator rights. Then choose the version you need. I will choose CUDA and then that will download the dependencies. Once it's done installing just select the folder with the processed images in it and select the folder where you want the final result to be stored. Make sure there's a decent amount of disk space 
space in the place where you have your output folder because the files this application will generate can be quite large. Also before you click start you'll only want to have this use GPU when possible checkbox ticked if you have a dedicated GPU because if it uses your integrated GPU your computer will most likely lock up so yeah. But then click start and wait until the process is finished. Before I show you the finished 3D scan I'd like to tell you about a 3D asset pack I made containing 10 more 3D scans in the style of the wheelbarrow that we scanned in this tutorial including this cool hammer here, a pickaxe, this large concrete block, a bucket with coal and some more. It is now available on my Gumroad. The link will be in the description. If you decide to pick it up I'd be massively grateful to you because it truly helps me a lot. But now the final 3D scan. Then once that's finished you can import the texture.obj file into Blender and Oh, this is kind of awkward. This isn't the 3D scan. Um, it's the subscribe button, definitely. So actually, uh, this is the 3D scan. And as you can see, when we compare it to something like Metashape, it holds up very well. Or if we compare it to something like Meshroom, it's much better than Meshroom. Um, so I'm very happy with it. And if you'd like to know how to clean up your 3D scans like this as well, click this video next and it will tell you all about it.